Good morning friends. TFCC injury is the most common soft tissue injury which is seen in your wrist joint. It is usually a mechanism of fall on the outstretched hand on an extended wrist and a, in a forearm pronation. So if you fall like this, there is an injury on the other side of the wrist and you may injure your TFCC disc. So what is TFCC? TFCC is triangular fibrocartilaginous complex which is seen on the other part of the wrist on this part and this is like a cushion which is seen in the wrist joint and which is between the ulna and the carpal bones. So the attachments of the TFCC are radius on the medial side and ulnar styloid on the lateral side and on the top there are the carpal bones and on the bottom there are the ulna head. Now this TFCC has got two attachments, the capsular attachments and the foveal attachment. The foveal attachments attach to the ulnar head and the capsular attachments attaches to the wrist capsule. So there are ligaments which are connecting the TFCC to other structures like the lunotriclitoral ligaments etc. So it's a disc like structure and it is a collagenous structure. So it is formed up of the collagen and it is a disc like structure and this avascular in the middle and vascular in the surrounding. So all those tears which are on the periphery on the periphery are vascular and they have a healing potential whereas the tears which are in the center of the disc are not vascular and they have got less healing potential. So grossly speaking any tear which is in the center is usually debrided and any tear which is on the periphery is repaired and any tear which is on the fovea is attached back on the fovea so that is called as a foveal repair so that we can do either with a suture anchor or with transosseous sutures. Now as we have discussed earlier the mechanism of injury is usually a fall on the extended wrist. So if, if your wrist is like that and you fall on this wrist in and when your forearm is in the pronation, then you have a chance of injury to your TFCC disc. Now, not all injuries of TFCC will cause a wrist pain and not all wrist pain are due to TFCC injury. So you must consider that but yes if you have a wrist pain which is more on the ulnar side that is on this side of the wrist then there is a more chance that you have a TFCC injury. A very good thing about TFCC injuries are many TFCC acute injuries can heal on their own. So these injuries can heal very well on their own if they are splinted well or in a small kind of a wrist splint or wrist brace. But if they are not able to heal, which is usually the case in around 10 to 20% of scenario, you may need a surgical intervention. Now, how can you diagnose if a patient is suffering from a TFCC injury? First, coming on to the sign and symptoms. First, there will be a history of fall or history of an injury to the wrist joint. That is the first presentation. Occasionally, it may be a micro repetitive trauma, so a patient who is a hard manual working laborer or a sports person can have a injury. Occasionally, this is in a sports person playing with a racket sport. So if this sports person are playing racket sports like this and the end of the racket may hurt the TFCC directly. So this is like a swinging the ball of the racket, specifically the baseball bat or a tennis racket may also give rise to a TFCC injury. So that is usually a mechanism. The patient will have pain on the ulnar aspect of the wrist. The pain will be here. Occasionally there will be instability. So this movement will be positive. So the TFCC joint will give rise to a DRUJ instability. So there will be a distal radio ulnar joint instability which may be seen in some cases. Now there are some specific signs which are described. One is a piano key sign. So what we do is we we'll do like a piano. If you press it like that, this part of the uh, ulna will become prominent and painful. And this is called as a piano key sign. The other sign which is useful is you put your hands under the table 
and lift the table up and this is called as a supination test and this will again cause pain on the ulnar, ulnar border of the wrist. So this is called as a supination test. Also you can do a test which is called as a grind test in which you move your uh, uh, ulnar head against the carpal bones and this is called as a grind test. And you can also do a TFCC compression or a TFCC stress test to actually decipher the injury. Now, if you are in doubt, the best test to diagnose it is a wrist MRI scan. And ideally, the MRI scan should be done with a dedicated wrist coil and preferably in a 3 Tesla MRI scan. If you don't have a 3 Tesla MRI, at least a dedicated wrist coil in a 1.5 Tesla MRI is a must. And usually the MRI will be able to give you a very, very good diagnosis. The diagnosis is confirmed on a technique which is called as a wrist arthroscopy. So let me uh, summarize it like this, that if you are having any doubt of uh, wrist TFCC injury, the best test for diagnosis is a wrist arthroscopy surgery. And what is a wrist arthroscopy? Wrist arthroscopy is basically a technique in which we insert a small 2, mm, two millimeter arthroscope into your wrist joint and we can directly see the TFCC injury. So if there is any kind of a TFCC injury, we will be able to identify it on the wrist arthroscopy. So wrist arthroscopy is gold standard to identify any kind of a TFCC injury which may be missed on a clinical examination, on any kind of test and on an MRI scan and also TFCC injury is best addressed and best treated also with an arthroscopic technique. So with the advent of arthroscopic technique, the open TFCC repair has become absolute. We are not doing it nowadays and ideally nowadays TFCC injury should be addressed with an arthroscopic repair. Now we are showing an arthroscopic repair how we do it in the insect. So you can have a look at how we do the arthroscopic repair of the TFCC injury in the insect and that is very nicely seen and we use speci specific devices, specific camera and specific scope along with specific instruments to repair the TFCC. If it is a ulnar sided tear, it is repaired in the fashion that is shown in the video. If it is a phobial tear, you can repair it either with, with anchors or with a transosseous sutures. Just a small word about the classification. The most commonly used classification is the Palmer's classification and it is of two types. One is a traumatic and two is a degenerative and it is of four types, four subtypes. Type 1A is the most common that is the central part of the TFCC which is torn. Type 2B is the ulnar aspect which is very common and post-traumatic. Type 3, a uh, type 1C is usually the distal part of the TFCC which is torn and type 1D is the radial part of the TFCC. It is a rare one but it is occasionally seen. Type 2 is a more of a degenerative TFCC more with it is more commonly seen with ulnocarpal infection syndromes. The type 1A, 2A is commonly degenerative. Type 2B is with contumulation of the ulnar head. Type 2C is a full thickness perforation of the disc. Type 2D is with linotactyl tears and type 2E is with ulnocarpal arthritis. So there are different type of classification but grossly you must remember that the best way to treat these injuries is with, is with a wrist arthroscope and wrist arthroscopic techniques in which grossly the central tears need a debridement and peripheral tears need a repair either a capsular repair with an outside in technique or if it is a foveal tear, you can do a repair with an anchor or with transosseous sutures. So hopefully I am able to address this topic nicely, elaborately. Still, if you have any doubts in your mind, feel free to write it on the comment box. Thank you.